You want me to make you a roll to eat now? Are you See, serious? When you're doing your lunch. Okay, when I'm doing my lunch, I'll make you a roll as well. I'm just making my overnight oats for tomorrow. Okay. Alright. <laughs> you lazy little shit. Do I want one? Yeah. Let me know when you're making another thing. Alright, okay. Where's my pot? <laughs> my pot. It's in your voice. Yeah. Where's my pot? <laughs> you need to go to bed, babe. I've got salted caramel and apple overnight oats, which I kind of made up myself. And then some peanut butter, pomegranate, pumpkin seeds, coconut, cinnamon, and maple syrup on top. image I've got this tendency to want someone to like fix it for me and find a way for me to love my body or even find a way to give me this incredible figure that then I'll love like I'll have good body image when I've got this perfect figure but I honestly don't think recovery is about that like we're not recovering to have the perfect body and the perfect body doesn't even really exist everyone's different shapes and sizes and I can't follow someone on Instagram and think oh I can't wait till I've got a bum like that or a waist and hips like that or whatever like I'm just gonna be the shape of me when I'm at my body's healthy weight like whatever that might be and it's not gonna be perfect like it will have jiggly bits and this bit and that bit that I'm not perfectly happy with so I don't know I'm trying to change how I'm thinking about body image and not think good body image means I love my body but think about recovery in terms of more like the life I'm building, I guess, and like finding me and happiness, not with my physical body, but like with the life my body allows me to live. I don't know if that's making sense, but <laughs> before I had this relapse, I was at a very healthy weight, like in the healthy BMI range, but I didn't stop at BMI 19 or 20 and say like, right, I'm going on to a maintenance diet now. I basically just kept eating until my weight just plateaued and I didn't change my approach to food. I still ate what I wanted. I didn't cut certain foods out or like treat them like recovery foods. Like I can only put peanut butter on my porridge when I'm gaining weight, but then I have to stop on a maintenance. Like, nope, I kept eating everything I wanted to. My weight plateaued and I didn't love my body, I wouldn't say. In fact, no, I definitely didn't love my body because it wasn't like this perfect body that I was seeing on Instagram or like, oh, when I'm recovered, I'll look like this, like, no. But I was loving what it allowed me to do and like the freedom I had in my head as well, like to go between meals without thinking about that next meal, without panicking if someone else was cooking food for me because I didn't know what was in it, like just the mental freedom around food and weight and trying to control things, like that's the bit that I loved. Right, anyway, I'm waffling. 
So my psychologist's been talking about body image in terms of how when we have eating disorders we tend to over evaluate weight and shape and like its importance in our lives which I definitely do if I think about how much I like check my body like looking in mirrors feeling how my clothes feel comparing myself to other people feeling fat worrying about my weight and weight gain and food and trying to control the whole thing oh my god it's so exhausting <laughs> but yeah it forms a really large part of my life what I think about and what worries me and concerns me and what's important to me. Okay, I'm just gonna make another cup of tea and then I'll show you what she's done with me. So my psychologist introduced me to this concept of like your life as a pie chart and it basically covers everything that's like important to you and how you evaluate yourself. So, let me show you. So this would be like a pie chart of a healthy person because there's a lot of different aspects to their life. So you might have like work in there, hobbies, relationships, family. And then people would have like a small segment related to their physical appearance and their body image because people do care. Like look at Instagram, everyone cares about how they look, but it would just be a small segment within like a very balanced and varied life. So that's like a healthy pie chart of self-worth and self-evaluation. And then she drew out like a typical eating disorder pie chart. And BI stands for body image. So we're basically like completely consumed with thoughts of weight and shape and physical appearance. And then we've only got a tiny little segment left for all other areas of our lives. So like look how imbalanced it is compared to a healthy pie chart. And obviously everyone's pie charts are different, but like, if you're being really, really honest, like what importance do you place on weight and shape? And like, yeah, mine is probably closer to this one than this one. And that's just not me. Like, that's not who I wanna be as a person. It's not what I respect in anybody else. I'm never gonna look back on my life and think, oh, thank God I spent 90% of my time obsessing about my weight and body image and controlling my food. So this isn't actually my pie chart, this is just what she drew as an example, but as an exercise, that was really good for me to think about like, what areas of my life are important, what makes me me, and what do I value, how do I evaluate myself, and then to see how much space body image was taking up in my life as a whole. Ugh. And obviously it's not rocket science to see that like, that's not a stable, platform for self-worth or happiness and actually in the happiness podcast which I love definitely recommend I'll link it below actually it's brilliant the guy says this sort of thing all the time he's Dr Robert Puff he's always saying that you can't put all your happiness on one area of your life so like your children making money your physical appearance your spouse because you can't just depend on one thing like life's too unstable for that and too changeable and so what happens if like you lose your job or your money or your children move away or you get older and your body starts changing or I don't know, you get pregnant and your body changes with that. Like if you're completely evaluating all of your self-worth and your whole world is based on one thing, like what happens when it changes? And even let's say it doesn't change, like it still takes all your time and effort to control it. So like you have to exercise if that's what you do or restrict your food or whatever you're doing to control your food intake outtake and to control your weight you're always going to have to do that in order to feel okay and then that's such a fragile like self-esteem or happiness because shit goes wrong like what if you break your leg and you can't work out what if you're going on holiday and there's a shit ton of food everywhere and you're going to have to avoid it it's a constant thing that we then have to control and so it completely fuels an eating disorder And she said this to me a couple of weeks ago and it helped so much. She was like, everyone has a finite amount of energy. Like we're not superheroes. We cannot maintain our weight below our body's set point and put up with all the shit that goes along with that and have a job and have a relationship and be parents or siblings or whatever, have friends, socialize. Like you cannot do all these things in life and place all this importance on weight and shape and try to control your weight. 
because I don't care how cool someone can make an eating disorder look or how easy they make it look or like, look, I've got my whole life in place and I'm still underweight. Like, no way. It takes a shit ton of effort to maintain underweightness through an eating disorder and live your life. Like, we just don't have the energy for it. And also when you're underweight, like, you're just, your body and brain aren't built for it anyway. Like, when you're underweight, all your body is telling you to do is go and eat because it just wants you to gain weight. So it makes you like obsess over food, notice everybody else's food. It's just constantly saying, eat, 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 eat. I really need you to go and eat. And your brain's not wasting time with like, oh, have you got hobbies or do you wanna go and see your friends? Like, no, they don't give a shit. They just want food in, they want to gain weight and they want to make you healthy again. Anyway, I feel like I'm getting off topic now, but I feel like it's no wonder that our pie chart thing is so skewed and yeah, so, oh, so she talked to me about what we can do, right. <laughs> Let me get my pie chart back. There's like two main ways to tackle this. One is to increase the importance of like the other areas of your life. And two is to decrease the importance of body image. Oh, Stevie. Look at Stevie. Hi, pal. Oh, and Beyonce. So thinking about like increasing the importance of the other areas of your life, so things that are not weight and shape and that might be a smaller segment of your pie chart, my psychologist was saying there's like two ways to do it basically. You can either introduce new sections to your chart or you can grow the sections that are already there. So if you think through everything that's important to you, like how do you value yourself as a person and what makes up your life? Maybe like friendship's really important to you or family and you've not been seeing your friends and family very much. Yeah, just really like work on placing, actively placing more importance on that segment and growing it. And it can be quite difficult, honestly, like if, especially if you've been ill for quite a long time, eating disorders are so consuming that you can almost forget what you're actually interested in. Or if your interests have totally changed, like maybe you need some new segments in there. So I don't know, maybe there's a hobby you've always wanted to do. You're interested in like learning a language or an instrument, maybe even bigger things like your job or education or something. Maybe you want to start studying something new, go back to school, something like that. And I know it is so difficult, especially when you're in recovery and you feel like you're like battling with the illness all the time, basically. But I guess the aim is that we're trying to like reduce how much that's consuming us and like grow out this other area of our life. But of course to like do that and expand those areas, you also have to decrease the body image and weight related areas. Because like that point of having finite energy, like, whoop, <laughs> I'll say, bum. Oh, bless her. Honestly, when we got this cat, she wouldn't come near us. She just hid all the time. I could go like a week without even knowing we had a cat. <laughs> now look, good girl. Oh, darling. So what's I saying? <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. My psychologist is still doing the decreasing the importance of the body areas with me now. So things like body checking, comparing to others, looking in the mirror, feeling fat, just general overthinking about like weight and shape and ugh. Okay, the other thing I forgot to mention when I started this video is sandwich update from Brendan last night. <laughs> So he did have his ham sandwich last night and it was so thick with ham. And this must've been like nine, 10 o'clock at night. I was making it before I went to bed. I don't know, for me, it's quite nice to see other people with like unrestricted eating basically, like no rules about times you can and can't eat and what you're allowed to eat. Like it's his body. He was going to bed and he wanted a ham sandwich. So he had one and he's woken up this morning and nothing has happened. He's not ballooned up. And now he's just gonna carry on with his day and he won't spend the rest of the day thinking about a ham sandwich that he wished he'd had or craving the next thing that he's gonna wait a few hours to be allowed to eat because he's given his body what it's needed and off he goes with his life. And also just thinking pie chart wise, like there's no way Brendan's is full with, am I gonna have a ham sandwich? What do I think about my weight and shape and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, his is so balanced and varied. And I guess body image is a part of it. Like he, 
cares about what he wears and stuff like that but like it's a very small part he's definitely got more life going on around the body image piece okay i'm back really quick this seems like a kind of odd thing to film but i just went to the kitchen to clean up and there's this little bit of apple left from my breakfast in the past i'd have like tupperware that up and then thought through in my head like what am i eating for the rest of the day when can i fit in this whatever it is quarter bit of an apple because I wouldn't want to waste it but I also wouldn't want to go over what I planned so I'd have to like work it in somehow and like I don't feel like that's very normal and it's definitely not healthy for me because then it makes me overthink food all the time and I'm constantly like planning and thinking ahead and working stuff out and trying to work little bits and bobs in so so I'm gonna eat it <laughs> Right, there we go, done. <laughs> and now I don't need to think about it anymore. I can move on with my day without planning in a quarter of an apple. Yeah, that was quite a weird thing to film. <laughs> so anyway, lots of love to everybody and I hope you all have a lovely weekend.